guys, this is Panzer Marcher 36. And today's gonna be a uh, well it's gonna be an inbox review, but first of all I'm gonna show you uh, the Sherman here. In case you didn't notice for some peculiar reason, uh, there was a new intro in the last video which I made which I made because I was bored and because I just felt like it and uh, in that there's a picture and it's the Sherman and it looks different than the Sherman I showed you like my first video or two. And that's because I repainted it and redid the diorama, so I'm just going to explain it quickly because I kind of just feel like it. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I, it used to be like a kind of like a dark olive drab, and it was a sandy desert, like a diorama. Because it was after a picture that I saw, which was like Tunisia, it was like desert. I think it wasn't, probably wasn't Tunisia, because Tunisia is kind of rocky, but... And then the tank was like really dark olive drab, which kind of like contrasted, and I, kind of, I thought that was interesting, but it didn't really look right. I didn't like it very much. So I repainted it. I made the color using. Uh, it was. You can see some of it in there. Leftovers. It's NATO green and XF60. I just kind of made the color. I just. I'm really good at mixing colors for some reason. I got an eye for it, but. I would have bought an olive trap, but I just kind of wanted to do it right away. So I just mixed it, and then the color there is. It's some. Um, uh, dark olive green from Tamiya, like 61 or whatever, and then uh, lightened a bit with some NATO green. For the darker camo streak, you kind of see there's some kind of there and there and there. Kind of goes across the front, and on the other side, yeah, kind of goes up there and over there. You can see it. And this is a uh, this is an Italian camouflage scheme. You kind of see it. the the, the diorama is like a kind of like a stony, dusty, broken thing. It's supposed to be kind of like an Italian road or something like that. Because if you've seen lots of the pictures of Italy, like the buildings just completely devastated, which is uh, kind of well, it's terrible first of all, but that's war and you know and it makes an interesting diorama because it got like rubble and stuff I also put it all over the vehicle so you can hear it in the inside <laughs> and I just put a lot of pigments on it not a lot of them are fixed so I can't touch it but yeah I just thought I'd show you that and also I have a little guy in there now I picked him up uh, for free he was in like the the free box at my hobby shop <laughs> he was already painted up I just gave him a wash and stuff yeah I got a whole bunch of figures from that box And uh, that's kind of it. I just want to. Oops. I just, I just wanted to show you guys this because I kind of did it. All right. So on with the inbox review. And the inbox review is going to be of Tamiya's M41 Walker Bulldog, which is a little kit I got recently. Uh, it's it's a older Tamiya kit, like the Panzer II that everybody did for the Holy Toledo. It's a Panzer II group build. It's from 1970 something. I don't know, it's like one of the really early kits. And I'm just going to do an inbox review of it because I got it. It was like less than $20. So as you can see the box art there, it's it's the Walker Bulldog. It's pretty much a chaffy, uh, but it's got a different turret. I'm pretty sure the chassis is a little bit different as well. But I think the suspension it looks quite similar. It probably is the same. But some elements like the well, that thing, and the you know, the travel lock and stuff like that. It's, Different, so is the turret and the gun. It's a 76 millimeter gun uh, because the chaffy, as you know, had a kind of a it was a sh it was a 75 millimeter gun, but it was it was the one of the B25 Mitchell, I believe, which was derived from the Sherman's gun. So it was like a kind of like an even worse ver version of the Sherman's gun. This gun was a lot better, and this was used a little bit in the Korean War and mostly in the Vietnam War as a scout tank, and it was very good actually. So yeah, let's look at it. It's not a super massive kit got the instructions here and it kind of explains some of it. Best part about it is though it's like a it is expected that the new M551 tank will will, will uh, replace this vehicle. Yeah, so cuz this was I guess pretty much just after the Vietnam War, actually you no know, during the Vietnam War, yeah. When this kit was released. Yeah, the M551 was not really that great actually, the Sheridan. But whatever. So, here's the hull and the top of the hull. Which, as you can see, it's got all the toe arms and everything already attached. Which some people might not like. So it's got a bit of a seam there, as you can see, a mold seam. Just down there, but that's the bottom, and it's fine. But it actually got really good detail, considering the age and the uh, fact that it's all molded as one piece. It's got the uh, holes for the battery-operated version or something, you know. There's the chassis. you got these nubs from where it was on the sprue or something at the factory. Once again, one big piece, but still really great detail. 
got kind of weld seams, but it doesn't really look that great. But they're kind of small, and you don't really notice them. So you kind of, you know, in there. Along the front, maybe you can get this. It's not really that super, but whatever. This kit's like, not like three times as old as me. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it's got really nice uh, details on it. So you can see, Tammy's kits. I don't know. They haven't really, they haven't really grown much since the '70s. But that's not a bad thing because they're super awesome kits. Here's the turret. As you can see, it's quite a large turret. So there's no clear parts for these uh, viewports there, which well, I don't know what I'm gonna do for that because they're kind of big clear pieces. But we'll do something. <laughs> Once again, the weld seams. These are a little bit better. And you got some little bits molded on, and the entire cupola is molded on and everything. I don't know how many parts there are on this kit, but there's probably less than 100. Focus, come on. There, you can see the weld seams there. Pretty nice in the bottom of the turret. It's got some rivets here. No, focus. Eh, there we go. Which are good. Alright, now we got tracks, which are these kind of rubbery things you usually see, you know. But that's fine. They're pretty good rubbery things. Oh, there's no detail on the inside. Okay, they're not pretty good rubbery things. It's just flat there. There should be kind of rubber pads there, I think, or something for the wheels. Yeah, but they're really nice on this side. I'll zoom you in a bit. Not bad. And it's it's a fast track, not a slack track, so it's it's fine with the rubber. Alright, what are we up in here? So this looks like the wheels and the well just pieces pretty much. Actually, this is the entire tank. All in here. You got decals there too, or decals, however you want to say it. Look at the decals first. So we got uh decals there for a Korean War one, probably I'm not sure. Got some US decals and then there's some Japanese decals, so it's probably a Japan ground self defense force version. Which do they show here? You can see the inside the turret there. I think there's three decal options and two of them are the Japanese ones. But I'll probably do neither of them, you know, none of them. Alright, so I got the gun here which is in halves, which is gonna be a pain in the butt. But whatever, you know. See it there. It should be fine. 50 cal is pretty good. It's got a seam down the, uh, oh, where are we? There we are. It's got a seam down the top of it, but yeah, that's fine. Got a whole bunch of little handles there. Those are probably for the little dimples on the side of the turret. And some jerry cans there from like a back of the turret or something. I don't really know. Got some cast numbers on this piece right there you can see them and then just little like bits and bobs they're all pretty good kind of like faint weld no, no, mold seams over them but you know that's that's fine what do we have here those like suspension I think no spare tracks ejector pin marks on this side but yeah should be fine except for like the 50 cal and stuff Headlights, they have ejector pin marks on the back, which is kind of bad because they're like a round thing, you know, so it's like flat on one end, but whatever, and these are just the wheels, nothing really to look at there. Good detail on the inside though. Oh. Come on. Is that focused? Yeah, it's not bad on the inside there. And the, that's a bit soft there. But whatever. And then here we got some figures who are just uh, the tank commander and two World War II guys with Thompsons and a carbine, which aren't good because, you know, this is a post World War II. But yeah, we got the tank commander here. He's just usual Tamiya stuff, so he's not really that great, but you know. Fine. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> One sprue. 
So yeah, thanks for watching this review, guys. It's a nice looking kit. If you can get it for like 15 bucks, then you know it's fine. I'm just gonna build this probably now, or I might save it to the ISM Vietnam era group build. I don't know. It'll be a fun little build though. Yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.